needs more waifu. Better. How we doing everyone? It's John. Hope you guys are having a good day today. And today I'm going to be bringing you another deck profile. Today we're going to be taking a look at a standard list for the Bang Dream clan. More specifically, I thought we'd take a look at a deck that I'm having a lot of fun with at the moment, surprisingly, and that is Poppin' Party. So, have you guys ever wanted to just do Ultima, but in standard? Well, there's a deck for that. So, I'm going to be going over my list for y'all today, my overall thoughts, um, my lineups, and explain my reasonings towards it. But before I do, just know that if you like this style of content, uh, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to our videos. And with that being said, guys, let us jump right into this deck profile for Bang Dream Poppin' Party. Alrighty, so here is the list for you today. Uh, as always, if you'd like, the link for this deck list will be in the description down below for the official Bushiroad deck log. Uh, the deck itself is very self-explanatory. Uh, you're trying to build toward your win condition, and your win condition being you want your uh, five primary band members to be on the field, and then when they are, uh, your entire front row will receive the trigger effects that your Vanguard reveals in their drive check. So, very straightforward deck. We play a list to help facilitate that. The deck itself is actually very consistent. The cards themselves mesh very well together in the fact that they help search one another or help recycle with one another. And then, of course, you play order cards to help facilitate that as well because, well, Bang Dream itself is very order-oriented focused, and the Grade 3 actually helps you uh, search for particular ones that you might need for a particular instance. So here's my list. Of course, if you'd like to take a screenshot, you may do so now, but I'll be going over my card by card and explaining my reasonings for them. Okay, so first up is going to be our Grade 3s, and we're going to start out with the only Grade 3 ride we have in the deck, and that is going to be Sparkly Stage Kasumi Toyama. So her effect is very simple. She has two. Our first one is Vanguard Continuous. If you have Rimi, Saya, Arisa, and Taie, all in their card names, all of your front row rear guards get the trigger effects from this unit's drive checks. So, in layman's terms, it is Ultima. Uh, for those who are unaware, in premium format, there is a uh, ultimate stride called Ultima, in which the effect is very similar to what you see here. A very powerful effect, and it is, of course, building toward your win condition. Um, in my playtesting, I found that I've been wanting to go into Force 1 more so than I do Force 2, only because, you know, you're drive checking so many crits already and you're trying to stack your deck with crits that you really don't need that extra crit power, that the extra drive checks are already pushing your opponent very fast and it makes them uh, have to make decisions very quickly. Uh, overall, very fun effect. Um, second ability, uh, Vanguard. If no orders have been played this turn, Counter Blast 1, search your deck or drop zone for up to one Poppin' Party music card, music being the order cards for Bang Dream, and you get to play it. So of course, order cards, once per turn. And with this, you're allowed to search out your three main order cards. We are playing in a way that, depending on the matchup, you might need to play a specific order to either help you look for your combo pieces or make a big push. Uh, so yeah, those are my reasonings. Overall, very good card, guys. Very fun card, too. So give it a try if you are up for it. And then the next card we play after that is going to be only one additional grade three, which is going to be an order card called Returns. So Returns reads as follows. At the beginning of the battle phase, if you have Kasumi, Tae, Rimi, Saya, and Arisa in their card names, then you get to reveal the top five cards of your deck, put up to one critical trigger from among them to the top of your deck, and the rest to the bottom of your deck in any order. And then for each critical trigger that you revealed, your entire board gets plus 5,000 until end of turn. So that is really, really good, guys. So if you're going in for that final game push turn, this is the card that you're going to use to try and beat your opponent over. Because say, for example, you're thinning out your deck, you're playing the game, and you're facilitating a lot of board. You probably have a lot of crit triggers still left in deck. You play this card, you check a lot of crits, reveal a lot of crits, you're obviously going to be stacking one, and because that is going to be drove check, then your entire board is going to get even more powerful with a lot of crits, and your entire board is also going to receive a power bonus because of returns. It's a very good card. It's a very fun card, but I only play it as a one-of because, of course, you're only going to need it in that one instance when you're trying to push your opponent over the edge and go for game. All right, so now we're going to move on to our grade twos, and for our first grade two, we're going to be running four copies of Taye Hanazono. So... Her effect is she has two, both are rear guards, 
and they are first one when placed, discard a card from your hand and return a music card from your drop zone to your hand. So it helps re recycle those uh, particular music cards that you might need for early games, such as your grade one and your grade two music orders. And then her other ability actually I really like is that when your Vanguard attacks, this unit and that unit get plus 5,000 until end of turn. So it's very good for both late game and for mid game. If you're trying to uh, go back and forth with your opponent, you kind of want to be able to have optimal numbers. And this actually helps in terms of facilitating that. Overall, I think it's a very powerful card. And of course it's a key combo piece. So you're going to play it as a four of because you want to be able to get her and the rest of the band members on the board to proc the Ultima effect. Okay, the next one is super duper fun too. Like, honestly, it, it's funny how much I'm enjoying uh, the uh, the clans over here. And that is Rimi Ishigome. So her effect, only one auto rearguard circle. When your Vanguard attacks, if your opponent's Vanguard is grade three or greater, you discard a card from your hand and you reveal a critical trigger from your hand. And if you do, the Poppin' Party Vanguard gets plus 10,000 plus one drive until end of turn. Yes, folks, plus one drive. That is hilarious because let's just say you're you know doing your thing you're thinning out your deck you're getting all those triggers you're stacking all those triggers deck on the uh, on your deck and you're trying to push in for the game you have Rimi Ishigome over here um you reveal that crit trigger and all of a sudden look now you have triple drive also just keep in mind um it doesn't necessarily, you know, okay, so one thing I, uh, I found really interesting is, say you didn't play um, an order, music order that turn. Oh, also, I think it would be important to say uh, right here. So, the order cards specifically have to go in the back row of your vanguard. So that way, the other boards can be left occupied for your band members. But with that being said, what I like is that if you, even if you didn't play an order this turn, if you have two copies of uh, Remy, you can put one on the backboard of your vanguard, and you can put another one on your front row. And because they're technically not hard once per turn, you can do it twice. So you can get quad drive, quad drive. And if you check four critical triggers, guys, you're just going to watch your opponent cry while you laugh. It is an amazing experience to behold. Um, yeah, overall, good card, funny card. Definitely give it a shot. Okay, now moving on, we're going to be playing three copies of another grade two called Kasumi Toyama. This is the grade two version of it. And her effect is very simple. Vanguard rearguard when placed on the uh, respective circles, look at the top seven cards of your deck and reveal up to one music card and add it into your hand, shuffle your deck. So very good card just for the simple fact that, you know, if there is a particular uh, music card that you need to grab, then she can help facilitate that. Or if you're just trying to thin your deck in general, this is another card to help thin your deck. You're trying to grab as many cards out of your deck as possible. So you can just leave all those critical triggers in your deck so you can go and have shenanigans on your opponent. Very fun. Very silly card. And then the next order card we're going to be playing is actually, I think, my favorite uh, order card out of the three, and that is the Grade 2 Kizuna Music. We're going to be playing three copies of this, and it has two effects. Uh, its first effect is continuous. If your opponent has a uh, Vanguard that is Grade 2 or greater, your entire front board will receive plus 5,000. And then the second ability is when placed, Soul Blast 1, you look at the top five cards of your deck, reveal up to one card from among them, and then put it into your hand, shuffle your deck. So super duper good card to help you get your combo pieces. It helps thin out your deck as well as get key combo pieces that you need. Because remember, in order to successfully do your grade three Kasumi, you need to have all five of the band members respectively on board. And this is a card that's gonna help you get all the combo pieces you need. So it's very good in terms of fluctuations and deck thinning, as well as being able to grab all the combo pieces you need. I run as a, as a three of because I value that. Uh, the problem, although, is gonna be, of course, the Soul Blast. There's a lot of um, plays that you are able to do, but they require Soul Blasts, so you need to plan accordingly. There's only a limited amount of Soul Blasts that you can do, so just keep that in mind. But overall, it's still a very good card, and definitely uh, give it a try. Maybe put it, put it as a 2 of if you don't feel comfortable, but I personally feel comfortable as a 3 of, so that's where I'm at with that. Okay, so now we're going to be moving on to the Grade 1 slots. And for the Grade 1 slots I have, the first one is going to be four copies of Arisa Ichigaya. So, her effect is... Rearguard Circle, win place, Soul Blast 1, reveal a critical trigger from your hand, you reveal the top 5 cards of your deck, reveal up to one Poppin' Party uh, card that's not named Arisa, add it to your hand, shuffle your deck. 
So another good card to help you get your combo pieces. Very self-explanatory. Um, the critical trigger effect seems kind of like, oh, how am I going to be getting a critical trigger into my hand necessarily unless I drive check them? But there are cards that you play in this deck that actually allow you to not only recycle critical triggers, but also bounce them back to your hand. So just keep that in mind. There are recycling cards, and she is just a card that requires it in order to help you thin faster. But still, very key card because, again, thinning, fast. Crit triggers, lots, good. Okay, the next card we're gonna be running is four copies of Saya Yamabuki. So her effect is rear guard circle, when placed uh, counter blast one, put a card from your hand to the bottom of your deck and return up to one critical trigger and one pop and party normal unit from your drop zone and put them into your hand. And of course you can only do this effect once per turn. So it's a hard once per turn. Meaning if you proc one Saya Yamabuki, you can only proc one Saya Yamabuki per turn. Now, this card is going to be a nice recycle card for not just your key combo pieces to help thin out your deck, but also for triggers because her first set effect says, her only effect, I'm sorry, says that you can uh, counterblast one and return a card from your deck. So if you have excess triggers in your hand and you feel like you're going to be able to properly guard next turn, chuck them right back into your deck and you're good to go for your following Ultima turn. Very good setup card and very good recycle card. Of course, she's also a key combo piece, so we're going to be running her as a four of. Not as much to say though, good card. Next, we're going to be running four copies of a grade one Kasumi Toyama. So she has two effects. Vanguard Circle, when placed, look at top seven cards from your deck, reveal up to one grade three Kasumi and added them to your hand. And then the act ability is put her to the bottom of the deck and return a pop and party without Kasumi from your drop zone to your hand. So very good card in the fact that one, she's a grade three searcher. Of course, you're only running your one main grade three being the Kasumi. So you're going to need a way to consistently be able to search for it. And this is a card that's going to help with that. Of course, it has to be Vanguard Circle. So she is going to be your ideal grade one ride, guys. So if you have her in your opening hand, at least keep one copy of her because that is what you're going to be writing. Next, the fact that she's allowed to recycle cards is also very nice. If you're playing and you're going a nice back and forth with your opponent, obviously your opponent's going to try and want to hit your rear guards because those are probably key combo pieces that you need in order to facilitate your Kasumi turn. So she is going to be a card that helps recycle them back to your hand. Not only that, but she's nice in the fact that she's able to put herself back. So she's able to make sure you don't deck out. Of course, you're probably never going to de deck out in, in the cases of this particular deck, but it's good to be safe nonetheless. Overall, very nice card. Moving on. All right. So the last grade one we're going to be running is, of course, a music card, and that is the music card Double Rainbow. <laughs> so Double Rainbow is auto rear guard when placed you draw a card then you reveal the top uh, look at the top three cards of your deck reveal up to one critical trigger from among them add it to your hand put the rest at the bottom of your deck so again it's another piece that helps you quickly cycle through your deck you're cycling you're trying to get to a lot of key combo pieces and it's a card that helps get a critical trigger out of your hand to do other effects for your other rear guard skills Yes, it's kind of a double-edged sword in a sense that it's taking away a critical trigger from your from your deck, so therefore you're not drive checking it. But it also helps because it's going to help grab key combo pieces that you need through certain skills from your rearguard circles. And if you need to, you do have cards that allow you to take that critical trigger and put it back to your deck. Overall, it's a fine card, but I don't think it's super necessary, so that's why I'm only running it as a two of. But if you feel more comfortable, you could probably run it as a three of and maybe take, take out something like the gray two. Uh, order card, or maybe even additional Kasumi grade one, depending on how you feel, but that's personal preference. It's up to you. And then for our grade zeros, very self-explanatory. We're going to be running the Kasumi Toyama starter for Bang Dream. Oddly enough, I do recommend, even though uh, it's just a generic V starter, so it really doesn't pump out of soul. Um, I would, would actually recommend running this one specifically just for the fact that it is a pop and party unit. So if you do soul blast it out and you do need to add a pop and party unit back to your hand, she's free and she's essentially a free 10k shield. So if you are going to run a uh, V starter, make sure it's of the, the pop and party uh, Kasumi type. Uh, next, we're going to be running only two of our PGs, only because PGs are good, PGs are nice, you need PGs to live, don't get me wrong. But the main focus of this deck is to try and drive check critical triggers. You want to drive check as many critical triggers as you can to try and push your opponent in as fast as you can. Uh, overall, the meta as it stands right now is, of course, very fast paced along with that. Uh, so keep that in mind. But, you know, it's also nice to just have that little bit of a cushion just to be safe. So we run it as a two of. If you feel yellow, go ahead, run 12 crit. 
uh, but I don't feel uh, that safe, so I'm gonna just keep it as my two of and leave it at that. Uh, and then, of course, that, keep in mind, that means we're gonna be running 10 critical triggers. Now, this one in particular, it's actually very funny. I think all the Bang Dream ones uh, say it in specific, but Sparkling Memory says you may include up to 12 copies of this card in your deck, which is super funny. So you could just play mind games with your opponents like, oh my god, okay, you drove check those four specific triggers. That means he doesn't have those left in your deck. And then you reveal the fifth one and he's like, wait, what? <laughs> um, play some funny mind games with your opponent like that. So that'd be pretty cool. But yeah, uh, 10 of these. And then of course, we're gonna be playing four heal triggers because heal triggers are important. You like them, you need to live in this game, guys. And heal triggers will help get you there. And of course, 20k shield is always nice. And uh, yeah, guys, that is, that's the deck. Overall, it's a very fun deck. Is it competitively viable? Um, at the current moment, I unfortunately don't think so. There are a lot more decks out there that are currently fast paced, but if you just wanna completely uh, surprise your opponent and rip the rug from right out, out of them, this is a fun deck to try. Maybe play it at a locals, see what you think, and maybe surprise a few, few people, and maybe even surprise yourself. Uh, the deck can definitely win a few games, especially, and I'm not kidding, if you go Kasumi and you do your triple drive and you get three crit triggers and just watch your opponent cry. Um, but with that being said, guys, my name is John from Team Gradelock. Hope you guys have enjoyed my deck profile. If you do, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, I will see you guys next time. Deuces!